What's up everybody and officially happy new year from Code to Things. Now that we're finally past the holidays, you know, New Year's, all of that jazz, I know a lot of us are kind of strapped for cash and what that means is it's going to impact your gaming budget. Well, I have you covered because today we are going to be covering the Logical Increments Destitute PC build. So let's go check it out. So if you don't know what Logical Increments is, you have been missing out. It is a fantastic site that ranks PC builds from destitute, so the lowest, cheapest tier possible, all the way up to monstrous. And I mean, they take care of everything. Graphics cards, a hard drive, power supply, case, everything. And so what I have planned for today is I have the destitute build. Yes, for about $240 USD, you can build this system here. And what is the destitute build you may ask, or how will it perform? I got you covered. First, it is the Cougar 330MX case, which I was actually surprised about. So it's about $42 USD, and I'm, I'm a huge NZXT fan. Uh, those are about $65 USD, so you're saving a little bit of money, and I was worried about what the build quality is. And I mean, it's a cheap metal, but I mean, it's a case, it gets by, it has some nice, factors about it. So it has a USB three and two port in the front. It looks like there may be an upgrade available to this because there's actually punched holes for two more USB ports on the side, as well as two punched holes for fan controls here. So I don't know if that's an upgrade or an upgraded module that I would buy. I wouldn't buy any module for this. This is good enough for this build. As for cable management, you can see it's your typical cable management you would get in a low end case. Um, it is good enough, you can hide things, but you will see on the inverse of this, there's not great routes in the system and you end up with a lot of dangling cables. Uh, for, uh, for example, I had the CPU cable that would cross any GPU I have because there was no entryway up above the motherboard to actually feed it. So that's a little bit of a negative there. Now, of course, no guts, no glory, and that's why we went with the ASUS A320MK motherboard. It is a smaller form factor motherboard. It only has two DIMM slots for memory and has one PCIe 3 X16 slot and two PCIe 3 X4 slot. So there's only going to be one graphics card in this that serves most people's needs, especially if you're going for a smaller form factor board, you're probably going for a smaller case than this. But that is not the point. We don't even care about graphics cards because we went with the Athlon 3000G CPU. That's an AM4 socket CPU. It is actually one of a few series from AMD that offers onboard graphics. Something that you typically see more often in the Intel side uh, and you would see from like laptops or something like that. We are rocking it in this case and that is the destitute build. No graphics card for us. No need to worry about the scalpers today. Now, if you take a close look, we are also using the stock CPU cooler, which is like gotta be one of the smallest CPU fans I've ever seen. Uh, it looks like it was just taken from the underside of a laptop, slapped on this sucker, and we're off to the races. But heat shouldn't be really that big of an issue. Even though this case only came with one case fan, I'm not going to be worried about it because I really have my doubts on how far I can push this system anyways. Now to be the true cheapest destitute build, it recommended that I go with one four gig stick of RAM. And uh, well, realistically, I know Windows barely functions at four gigs of RAM and I had a 60 day wait from Newegg. So I slapped in the next recommendation, which was two four gig sticks to at least give myself eight, give myself a little bit of room and also give myself a project that I didn't have to do in the middle of summer. So I had tossed in two Corsair Vengeance, two by fours, and I also slapped in a Kingston SSD. So the recommendation was a 240 gig drive is better than a larger capacity SSD just for a performance ratio to how low end the rest of this hardware will be comparative. We wanted to at least gain some speed as much as we could from an SSD. So I've connected via a SATA connection to my six gigabit SATA port here, and we will see how well that actually performs. Last but not least, we went with a Thermaltake 500 watt power supply. Now, Destitute does recommend a 450. It was out of stock. I didn't really find the problem. I can probably pillage this part later if I need to use it in a different build. So I went with a 500 watt power supply for just about $5 more. So totally worth the extra mileage there. 
Now this PC build is actually going to be part of a two part series. The first part is just this build. Let's throw it through the gambit, see how well it does. It is supposed to be the lowest tier recommended by logical increments for PC gaming. Can it even really do that? Should it even be on that list? We will find out. Part two will cover streaming services and see if this system can even handle those. So I'm talking things like GeForce Now and Google Stadia. A low end system is supposed to just be able to, you know, bring up a browser and supposedly launch those games, play your game over the WAN to a high end system that's on the other side. So we will see how usable that is from a low end system, from a high end system, and comparing it just to playing locally is it worth a damn? So stay tuned for that and let's go check out and see what the benchmarks come back from good old destitute. Okay, so I was surprised that Fortnite could look this bad. I mean, the trees, the water, the grass, every material in the game was disgusting. I had to play it on the lowest settings with an experimental renderer on just to be able to hit a decent amount of FPS. As you notice through most of the gameplay, I'm hitting about 60, but I'm taking violent dips down to 20, and sometimes the teens, when there's particle lighting, or I'm being shot at, or I'm breaking materials, any of anything that really is going to constitute as combat or the primary function of the game besides walking, was taking FPS hits, and I would be remiss to say that I could get by from uh, a competitive standpoint on a system like this. Now, surprisingly, Fortnite was one of the best performing games, and I think that has to do with the graphics controls. I could really dumb things down. When I played games like Rocket League, there's still lighting effects and collisions and explosions, and it was very impactful to my gameplay. And when I tried to do something like Fall Guys, where I thought it would be lighter, uh, the graphics aren't that harsh, and you're really just weaving in and out, you're not making any sharp movements, the input lag was so great, it just felt like I was playing over a distant WAN in another country. Now, of course, there's a game everybody's talking about, and I just had to try it, and that is Cyberpunk. And everyone knows you need this beast machine to be able to play it, and I thought, what the hell, let's try this. And try as I did, I only achieved seven FPS as, I believe, the maximum. It was not an overly impressive experience on the lowest of low settings. I struggled to walk, open doors, navigate. It's just totally unplayable on this system. Now I did go ahead and run a 3D Mark benchmark against the system to really compare it against other builds and see how it holds up. And unsurprisingly, it's not very impressive. That's right, according to 3D Mark, a standard office laptop is more powerful than this system. In fact, when compared to a mid to, let's say mid high build of a 3900X with a 2080 Super in it, it wasn't even close. Now I added my high end build with a 3090 and a 5950X and things just get blown out of the water. But it doesn't tell the full story. Now this build was never meant to play any game on any setting or just wow people or be for a competitive gamer. No, this was an entry level system that gives you some good potential to grow. Now the motherboard may only have two dim slots and modern motherboards tend to have four, but if you buy the appropriate gear from the start when talking RAM, you can put yourself in a good situation. Instead of buying two four gig sticks like I did or the recommended one four gig, buy one eight gig stick. Later on, upgrade to another 8 gig stick, you have 16, which is plenty for the typical user. The motherboard also has an X16 PCIe 3 slot for a graphics card, and that is all you need. You're not going to be doing SLI in the setup, so you don't need more than one, and no graphics card takes advantage of PCIe 4. So there is no difference between that PCIe slot and a PCIe slot on an X570 board. Additionally, you only had to upgrade the graphics card, and you have a pretty good system but it is an AM4 slot. So you can put a 3900, a 5900, 5800, you can put an AM4 CPU in there and really squeeze more performance out of the system later on because the board is compatible with it. It is a perfect starting point if you get a little bit of money at a time and you roll the upgrades into it as you need them. Now this doesn't mean you can't play any games in the short term. I think I could get away with playing Fortnite uh, for a while. It would bug me on FPS drops. It doesn't happen 
repeatedly, so I think I could get away with it, but I might have some issues in intense firefights. There are other games that are compatible with it, and in fact, there are other ways to play games. Well, I'm Chris from Code the Things. Make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video, which will feature the Destitute build. I will be doing a deep dive into the game streaming services such as GeForce Now, Stadia, and Shadow Web, and seeing can I turn this rinky dink machine into a gaming beast? I'll catch you next time.